Comradia, GAD, Vogus Fodja, Guji, Balforstia, thank you for the warm welcome and I'm very honoured to be welcomed onto the stage this evening and to be preceded by our formidable, or a formidable Belfast woman, the first female Sinn Féin Mayor of this great city, Dirgy Hargey. Dirgy will be an absolute champion for the city in our year ahead and we want to wish her well. I think it's poignant that in a year that marks 100 years since partial suffrage that a woman is at the helm of this city. Belfast has that long tradition of female activism, from Winnie Kearney to Maria Farrell and now today to Dirgy Harge. So we have a packed weekend ahead of us as we discuss and debate how we're going to advance our ideas and our vision for a new Ireland. And Sinn Féin is working the length and breadth of this country. We're in London, Europe and North America to bring our influence and much needed influence and influence change across Irish society. We are rooted in the communities from which we come and it's through our organising, campaigning and the leadership within the institutions but most importantly on the ground that we are delivering that real change. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our activists, all of our public representatives, your families for your passion your hard work and your dedication to this party, to those who we represent and the new Ireland that we're helping to build. We are a party on the move. We're bringing people and generations together from all different backgrounds in common cause. We're fortunate to have a wealth of experience from representatives and activists who over many years have helped build the party to where we are today. So a huge welcome to all of you this evening. I also want to, in particular, welcome the families of our Patriot Dead to this year's Ardesh. You're very much welcome. There's a place for everyone in the Sinn Féin movement. We're a modern, progressive Republican party who stands with the people in defending and advancing Irish national interests. And Sinn Féin stands ready. We stand ready to be in government, north and south to assert and deliver rights for all, to continue the fight against Brexit, to oppose austerity at every turn, to deliver high quality public services, to take on the vested interests and put an end to cronyism and making government accountable to the people and the law, to deliver real prosperity, encourage entrepreneurship, decent jobs and a fair pay for a fair day's work. Sinn Féin stands with women. The recent repeal result was for all women, for the forgotten women of the mother and baby homes, for the women that were being failed in crisis, for the mothers that were forced to give up their babies against their will. It was a vote for compassion. It was a vote to say loud and clear, women will never be left behind again. Women's position has improved in Irish society. Glass ceilings have been smashed and shattered, but there is still plenty to do. We need to now close the gender pay gap. We need to bring forward new laws that provide access to healthcare north and south. They need to live free from violence. We need to provide affordable childcare, end economic inequality, and bring more women into public life and politics. Aharja, and surely you agree, it's time for a woman Taoiseach to lead the next government and surely that woman is Mary Lou MacDonald. I'm also so proud of the huge numbers of young people who are active in this party. A whole new generation of young Shinners, a whole new generation of emerging young leaders, new voices with big ideas who symbolise a bright and a hopeful future. You are the future leaders and you will achieve. You'll make your mark and you'll make a difference in shaping a prosperous Ireland for the future. Higliat agus beliat, mulan ogi agus chucky she. You join this movement at a truly defining period in Irish history, not least in the context of Brexit. Brexit represents the greatest economic threat to the island of Ireland in a generation. And I fully respect the right of the British people to
to leave the EU and I wish them well. However, I am absolutely opposed to the British government dragging us out of the EU against our will. Sinn Féin wants the whole of Ireland to remain within the EU just like the people voted. We have influenced and made our case to the EU27 in the Dáil and the European Parliament. We will continue to make our voices heard, to build progressive coalition around our national interest. Myself and the leaders of the SDLP, the Alliance and the Greens presented two joint statements in recent weeks where we made it very clear that human rights and equality provisions must be protected. We cannot withstand exclusion from the single market or the customs union. That we, protect, that we need to protect the Good Friday Agreement in all of its parts. That the backstop that was agreed by both governments and the, EU, by the British government and the EU27 is the bottom line in order to safeguard our political and economic stability now and for the future. The four party leaders speak for the majority of the people in the North. The DUP do not speak for the majority of the people in the North. They are putting their self-serving pact with the, D with the Tory party at Westminster before the people's interests here. They are living in a fool's paradise. They are blindly propping up Theresa May, who is preoccupied with negotiating with her own cabinet rather than with the EU. Britain is divided. Ireland is united. We will not be collateral damage as a result of the reckless Tory DUP Brexit agenda. There will be no border in Ireland. Shine. In April, we marked the 20th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. This gave us all time and space to reflect on how far we've come, and it reminded us that nothing can be taken for granted. And despite our ongoing political challenges, the island of Ireland has been transformed as a result of the peace process. The Good Friday Agreement is the centrepiece of a more prosperous, peaceful society. The agreement defines new relationships on this island and between our islands. And yesterday evening, myself and Mary Lou met with Prince Charles in the rebel county of Cork, where we talked about the necessary work of reconciliation. Much pain and hurt has been caused over the years to many people, and we must attempt to heal that pain, to recognise each other's loss, and to find ways to trust each other. We must build bridges that we all can cross. We must rid our society of sectarianism. We must choose to live together. We must choose to continue to build on the reconciliation work of Martin McGuinness over many years, and we will do so because it is the right thing to do. So instead of refighting battles of the past, we all, unionists and nationalists, need to have the humility to accept that we have conflicting narratives, conflicting histories, and conflicting allegiances. We must reach a sustainable compromise through dialogue and through agreement, create a future where everyone feels that they belong, where our culture and our identity is respected, where we recognise each other's right to express being Irish, British, both, or indeed neither. The abandonment of those principles by both governments, both the British government and the DUP, has led to a situation in the last 18 months where the people of the North have had no government. That's not acceptable. It's not tolerable. It's not good enough. No assembly and no executive is the price of the Tory DUP pact. We set out to restore the executive on the basis of equality, of rights and of respect. And in February, we reached an agreement that created the conditions for the executive to be re-established. However, the DUP walked away. The issues which require resolution are not going away. All roads will lead back to the negotiating table. And in the meantime, there can be no justifiable excuse for refusing to afford citizens here their civil, social and cultural rights, whether that be Irish language rights, access to coroner's inquests, equal marriage rights or women's right to health care. Fifty years after the civil rights campaign, rights will not be denied. Thank you. There is a
clear requirement under the Good Friday Agreement on the part of both governments to ensure equivalent standards of protection of rights which exist in all other parts of these islands and they must be delivered here too. Over recent months, I have met with all sections of society, of business community, trade unions, including the CBI, Chamber of Commerce, local industry leaders and Intertrade Ireland. They all want the local institutions to deliver economic progress, and so do I. For a successful competitive economy, we need a skilled workforce and we need a new economic strategy. But we also need political certainty and stability. None of this can be delivered if the institutions do not command the confidence of the people. It's not an either or situation. We need both. And so the message from this Ardesh to both governments is loud and clear. You must convene the British Irish Intergovernmental Conference without delay and determine how you, as joint stewards of the peace process, will remove the obstacles to power sharing. Mary Lou and I will be in London on Wednesday, and this is the message which we will be delivering directly to Theresa May. The Good Friday Agreement provides a peaceful and democratic pathway to Irish unity. The issue of Irish unity has taken on a whole new dynamic because of Brexit. Demographics are changing, and so too is the political landscape. This cannot be ignored. I think Peter Robinson's recent remarks at Queen's University acknowledge this. The Good Friday Agreement gives the people the opportunity to, and choice to decide our future together. How we live together, how we work together and how we share this island together. The political momentum on change is moving in this direction. Sinn Féin wants a new Ireland, a fairer Ireland, a united Ireland, but we don't own the debate. I have absolutely no doubt that many, many people from a unionist community who look at Brexit, who do look at Brexit with the same fear, the same trepidation as nationalists and republicans. A unity referendum is coming and we need to be prepared for it. There is no contradiction in declaring and delivering on our commitment to power sharing with unionism and a functioning assembly, whilst also alongside initiating a mature, inclusive debate about new political arrangements which serve all of us who share this island better. Similarly, there is no contradiction whatsoever in unionism working the existing constitutional arrangements while taking its rightful place in the conversation about what a new Ireland would look like. This is a defining period in our history. The opportunities for real change are within our grasp. It is time to hear all the voices within this debate. We must continue our journey of dialogue, of listening, of sharing ideas, because in the new Ireland we can there can only be a victory for us all. It's our task to persuade people why it's in their economic, cultural and political interests to share power, not only at Stormont but on an all-island basis together. To assure people that all identities will be protected, that there will be guaranteed rights and entitlements for all in the new Ireland. As Republicans, we are about transforming and uniting our country for everyone, not ourselves alone. So let's push ourselves, challenge ourselves, be confident in ourselves. Let's lead the change. Let's bring people with us. Let's shape the future together. As Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Comrades, we are that group of people. Mina Bukas, August Gormila, Mayogov Galor. Have a great Ardesh. Sinn Féin, Goananis, Carta August Eintos Naharan, Equality, Rights and Irish Unity.